Judy, okay, this is going to be the fourth damn time we try this, okay? So, I've already tried to do this video three or four times. I had to scrap it over and over because of something or being interrupted or come to find out. So, now here I am in the office trying to get this quick moment. We can get this quick, this quick kick in. Okay, look, Carl. Season two of Pose, first they dragged us in, but now... They are snatching our wigs, okay? They are snatching. They are letting us have it. Last night, so let's say last night, the category is worth it. Yes, basically, you know, it taught us, you know, basically what it was doing was teaching us all about what I was, you know, learning for us to learn about our self-worth because all the characters were going through that. First, first and foremost, okay, the House of Ferocity won their first title. Well, their first trophy, and I wouldn't have gave Lulu the. I would have made them score her. I wouldn't have just gave it to her like that because that really didn't impress me. That I mean, it was cute, and you could see it had um, it had Dorian. You know, it had him on. You know, a lot of the crowd it had them on edge. Um, it had Damon. Excuse me. It had Damon on edge, and a lot of other people. But it really wasn't all that. You know, it was cute. You know, maybe for 1990, okay, it was impressive. Maybe because we done seen it over and over and over in pageants and other shows, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we give it to him. Miss Lulu was just proud, you know, or pray tell, pray tell good to, 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 to basically let Miss uh, Candy have it about everything. Uh, you know, I really really uh love that not only are they still giving us you know pieces of the ballroom but they're also giving us this great storyline this year and and congratulations are already getting picked up for season three just after the first episode okay fx is all for it now i could say fx network is an opportunist but you know because it looks like they you know for, there was there was talk last season about it being you know, uh, canceled because the week the, the ratings were weak. I don't know. Okay, you never know what's going on with the media now and then in these stories, but it's a great story. Now, to see Blanca out here trying to get get hers, baby. Yes, Miss Blanca, Mother Blanca, get yours. You know, she's. Cha, hold on. All right, girl. You know, I'm in the office, so I gotta get this quick. I mean, they interrupted. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, it's good to see Blanca getting hers or trying to. Because, you know, back in the day, the only way the girls could work uh, is either they work, like, in the clubs as performers or bartenders. Uh, or they had to work in nail shops or um, hair salons. You know, stuff like that, you know, or they had to be, you know, and if they couldn't do that, they, they either worked the sex trade, they worked as, you know, prostitutes, they worked the phone sex lines when the 1-900 numbers were hot. Believe it or not, a lot of those people you thought were girls were actually, you know, the T girls or guys just pretending to be girls. So, it, it, and if you could get a regular job uh, back then, it was, it was basically a not what you knew, but who you knew situation. And, you know, like myself back then, I could get a job anywhere because, you know, I just was just a guy, you know, even though I was gay and, you know, but those, those girls and, you know, and some people who were trying to really just live their life, their true authentic self, they couldn't do that. They could not live their life the way they wanted. Okay. And they could, so, I mean, they, they basically couldn't get a job per se, okay, but uh, to see her go out there and get that, to try to get that shop, and she really stepped out on faith, and, but her landlord, Miss Norma, is, is, is a, is a grand damn bitch, I mean, just, she is grade A bitch, I mean, of course, she acts like she's tough, she's mean, and she's connected, but I think we're going to come to find out she not as big and bad as she uh, pretends to be. And kudos to Ryan Murphy and his uh, team for uh, casting the lovely uh, Patty Lapone in this role. 
And if you don't know who Patti LuPone is, she is the original actress from the Broadway show Evita. Uh, and she, yes, uh, the same Evita Madonna did. So Patti LuPone is the original actress for, uh, from Evita. Uh, she did, she's won many, many awards for her role. Uh, she is well loved. So kudos to that, to that, that, that production company for keeping these, uh, these actresses, you know, out there. It's just like with Tyler Perry. He's not going to let his, his, his old school divas and his faves, uh, just sit around and collect a check. If they still can get up and work, they make sure they're going to work. But I just hope we're not about that. We're not about to have a uh, 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 empire situation where all of a sudden we got a whole bunch of guest stars and they're just in there because they got because you're able to get them and throw them in there. I hope that's not going to happen. All right, so we see that now I know. Oh, girl, okay, now I know why Electra is acting the way she's acting. Okay, yes, Mustang has taken a, a side hustle as a dominatrix. And you got to be tough. You got to get in character. But I don't think she's getting into character. That's Electra's real self, okay? But then she's mad. She's mad and she's hurt because she decided to become her true self. And then Mr. Ford drops her, or Daddy Ford drops her. Uh, she basically loses everything. She has to be homeless. She had to go back to work in that show world. And she's angry you know and you know now she has to work you know she's the hostess at Indochine and she seems to be happy with that because you know she did say she wants to keep both jobs but I think when she get in there and she whipping them asses with them whips chains and she's flogging these boys she is in her true element like she even said she found a career that she is truly natural and she likes doing uh, I think we're going to see, she's going to get herself in some major trouble with this, uh, but let's wait and see what happens, okay? Also, uh, but she let the House of Ferocity down. I told you last week this House of Ferocity thing was not going to last, was not going to happen. And true enough, she already, only after a couple of weeks, she's sick of them hoes. She flipping their tables too. But oh my God, to see her, to see her just, <laughs> she went straight, straight housewives on the ass. Okay. She went straight housewives. That will be interesting to see, to see Electra take on Tammy. You know what I'm talking about if you watch uh, Real Housewives. Anyway, so um, what else is going on here? Oh, hold on. Got a visitor. All right. So what I was saying is this. Um, I knew when Ricky uh, went off to the dance for Albie Shore's tour, he was going to be fucking around. Mm hmm. And, and, and Damon know this. But see, Damon had lost his way. Now, Blanca told him, don't get wrapped up and do not lose your way. Now, she's dealing with so much with her HIV, you know, status and all these funerals. She's kind of not paying full attention to Damien. So, I mean, it's just obvious, you know, he's young and he's good looking. Um, you just knew it was going to happen. And there's always some bitch you know, trying to bring you down, trying to kill your vibe uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, it, it, you know, whatever. See, that's how young, that's how young dudes do it. OK, they have no respect for nobody's relationship. Uh, pretty much he wanted to make sure, you know, uh, uh, Damon knew, you know, Ricky, he had did Ricky. And I'm like, man, that that ain't even cute. That's not even kosher. But you know what? Even, even that's just how tired shiftless hoes are, and he got the ass whipping he deserved. Okay, but I guess, <laughs> I guess Sister Pray Tell was uh, was definitely pissed off, and I've had those moments. I've had those moments when I've been at the bar, and it's just fight after fight, and you trying to groove and have a good time, and you just want to, sh you just shut that bitch down. Okay, you better ask somebody back in South Florida. You know, one too many fights, I shut that hoe down. I don't care if you paid your money or not. 
Uh, now, I see love. I see, I smell it. I see it. You can see it in their eyes. Poppy and uh, Angel. But they didn't get into that storyline last night. No, baby. No. Mm -mm -mm. Not at all. And uh, now, how in the world, you know, that Blanca decides to go into this agreement. Now, I, you know, without without paperwork, but, you know, she was just so happy. And uh, but, oh, boy, clocked her and went back and told Miss Norma about it. And she was not happy. But you know what? I really think that storyline, you know, it may it may not. I, I'm hoping it's not going to be one of them storylines where, you know, they're going to try to chase her out, chase Blanca out or burn her out or whatever. I really hope that her and Miss Norma actually become partners and good things happen because Blanca needs it. OK, and to see her decide to come out with her HIV status to her children, that was very important because see, she, her kids weren't taking it seriously. You know, and them boys were, and, and that's what happens. And it's happening nowadays. Cause see, these boys, these kids, they're not taking it seriously, okay? They out here doing whatever, doing whoever, how many, you know, how many they can get, how many they can do all at one time. And that's what's sad, okay? And believe it or not, there are many, 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 many young dudes out here who are fucking with no condoms, okay? And some of you watching it know you're doing it, okay? I mean, let's just be for real. And um, a lot of you out here doing it. But you know what? You're going to learn. If it ain't HIV, it's going to be some other form of STD and you're going to be burning, itching, screaming, crying. If it ain't that, you're going to get a you're going to get a urinary tract infection, be up and pop in antibiotics because somebody done ran up in you dirty and left you with a bacteria. OK, but anyway, and and see when she found out that, uh, you know, Ricky and Damon had been having unprotected sex again. That just set her off because she just she wants them to see and, and and they were right. The way to combat it is to combat it at home. Bring it to bring it home. Make it real for them. And that's what happened. Um and it, and it, it's just sad. It is sad. Um but I'm glad I seen something that they touched on. That they touched on last night. And they touched on it before. Um, the boys had went to the Palladium for tea dance, okay? And they said, well, you know, mother, you know, nobody was paying attention to us once again. You know, uh, you know, have you ever been to a tea dance? Uh, that is definitely something that, you know, the white gay boys kind of do and have always done. And, and even back then it was true and it's true now, you know, in places like Wilton Manors and in the, you know, little exclusive, uh, communities, uh, they had been, you know, gentrified, you know, for the gay, to, you know, towards the gay community. We as blacks, we're still in an era and age where we have to have our own nights uh, and at certain clubs or make certain clubs or bars our own on certain nights. Because, you know, like we we can go to a tea dance or go to a bar that's really popular and there may be 20 of us there. And we're all convened together because we have to get together and know each other. You may have two or two to three of us because they with those other crowds and they're going to act like they don't know you. But most of the time we're only, you know, we only get paid to get paid attention to if we're the stripper, the drag queen or the or, or we're dancing around okay because like, we really you know and it is bad because to be to be black and gay and feel like you don't belong amongst your own community so i get that and i'm kind of like i said i'm kind of glad that they did touch on it and they are trying to touch on it uh and i hope that these episodes when they they, they talk about this stuff that they really get into it and it really shows light on the world uh of what you know what's going on here in the gay community um i am so pleased with this season i'm very pleased uh uh so you know what 
I can't wait till next week because it's just going to get better and better and better. Uh, we see that Miss Electra got herself an apartment. All right, girl. She got a big and she bought her outfits in alphabetical order. Alphabetical order, child. You got to get it together. OK, but see. Something going to happen. Something going to happen. You know, uh, did this week's soundtrack once again, the soundtrack once again is on point. I wish they would come to me and make me music director or, or call me, you know, with some suggestions, baby. Uh, to see that they did Jody Watley, Don't You Want Me, Meeting in the Ladies Room by Climax. Uh, what else was on this week's episode? I don't know what the gothic song was, and I think it might have been an Iggy Pop song, but I could be wrong. Uh, what else was there? Um, oh, Giving You the Best That I Got by um, Anita Baker. And, oh, Baby Love by Regina, which is one of my favorites. And a lot of people thought that was Madonna back in the day. So, anyway, go. Uh, oops, hold on. Hold on, Judy. All right, excuse me, Judy. So, like I said, this season, so far, uh, oh, my God. And like I said, that ending, when she, when she came, Blanca came out, and Lil Poppy, he deserves that boy. That actor deserves an Emmy nomination. Just somebody needs to submit just that, just that scene to the Emmy board. Because uh, he did the damn thing, okay? And he, I was moved. I mean, I was moved. So I, I'm thinking they're hitting it. I really would like to see them, you know, put together a full season one, season two soundtrack. But of course, it's all gonna it's gonna be streamed only. They're not gonna really put anything out, you know, physical form. I don't see that happening. Maybe overseas, uh, overseas, you know. But I don't see a physical form CD coming out. They don't really do that anymore. But hey, if this was a couple of years ago, that that would be a hot ass hot ass CD. It would. Um, but the music is on point. The clothing is on point. Uh, I really love the fact that they did um, they did add that quote at the end of the show by Hector uh, Escrava Ganza, who had just passed away recently. Um, he was a part of the House of Escrava Ganza, uh, uh, you know, one of the original houses. Um, and so he also served as a um, and the consultant on the show on season one and he passed away recently so they added a quote from him and it's true family is not about blood family is about you know you you know the family that you go through good bad with you know the family you choose so i really think you know they did their best but until next week remember meet me back here Tell your kinfolk to get it together. And on that note, you put that in your tea mug and sip on it. And you tell your mama, I said, hey, 